everyone. I am Meryl. I am Food52's resident pasta maker and I run a platform called Pasta Social Club. Today I'm going to show you how to make foie d'olivo, which are olive leaves. <laughs> Excuse my pronunciation. I'm currently taking Italian and I am not quite there yet. Um, this is a pasta from Italy's southern Apulian region. It is a perfect pasta shape to add to your repertoire in general, but especially if you don't have any special pasta making equipment, all you need are your hands and a butter knife. I'm pairing it today with a salsa verde, which is kind of like a general green sauce concept more than it is a specific recipe. Uh, this one is packed with a whole bunch of herbs. It's got some olives and capers and garlic, uh, definitely a little anchovy in there, and a chili pepper for some spice. It is the perfect no-cook summery alternative to pesto and also happens to be excellent on fish and a sandwich and meat and vegetables uh, and with a spoon as well. So should you have any leftovers, it definitely won't go to waste. All right, so with all of that said, let's get cooking. I'm going to make my pasta dough by hand according to what we call the well method. I like to start with my flour in a big mixing bowl since I'm working in a small space, but of course you can start the more traditional way with the flour piled on a large wooden surface if you have one. Like many Southern Italian pastas, this one is made with semolina flour and water. To take the olive leaf look to the next level, I'm mixing a spinach puree with my water and adding it to the dough to dye it a beautiful, vibrant green. And then, with a fork, gradually introduce small increments of flour from the edges into the center. I'm looking to create a thick, batter-like consistency here. This will give me a smooth base for my pasta dough. Once I've incorporated as much flour as possible with the fork, I'm going to fold in the rest with my hands. The consistency of pasta dough is not like bread, it's not like pastry, it's firm and almost heavy, so you really want to get as much flour into the liquid at this stage as possible. The way I like to do this is to gently guide the loose flour from the rim of the bowl towards the center. Then, in an almost staccato-like motion, I use my fingertips to tap the flour into the liquid mixture all the way down to the bottom of the bowl. I'm going to repeat this process from all directions and then continue to fold into the center of the bowl until a shaggy dough-like blob emerges. Don't panic, the dough isn't supposed to look pretty yet, so if it's a flaky mess like mine is, you are doing it right. I should also note that because I'm using a green puree instead of just water, the dough is generally a bit drier than usual. If it's crumbling like mine is here, just spray it with a bit of water or gradually add some with your fingertips until it comes together. Don't pour a bunch more water on top or you may end up with a sticky mess. Kneading pasta dough is a crucial step since this is when the dough will become elastic and able to stretch into our beautiful olive leaves later on. It's pretty hard to over knead pasta dough, but it's easy to under knead it, so when in doubt, just keep going. I'd say 10 to 15 minutes is a good benchmark to know your dough is in a good place. Yes, I know. I get winded every time I do this, and you can definitely skip your next arm workout. You can knead the dough however you feel comfortable, but I like to use the heel of my hand and push the dough forward across the board, then bring it back about halfway over on itself. I do this a couple of times in one direction in a sort of rocking motion before turning it 90 degrees and repeating over <laughs> and over and over again. I also always fold the dough towards the same general spot to keep a consistent seam, while the other side of the dough never leaves the wooden surface. I promise, the more you work the dough, the smoother it'll get. It shouldn't be sticky at all or crumbling. If it's either one of those after the first few minutes of kneading, add light dustings of flour to the surface or small increments of water with your fingertips. Okay, our dough is nice and smooth, and a good indication that it's elastic is if it springs back when I lightly tap the surface with my finger. Then I'm going to wrap it tightly in plastic and let it rest for about 15 minutes at room temperature so it can recover its strength before making the pasta. While the dough is resting, it's the perfect time to throw together our salsa verde. First, I'm gonna go in with a whole bunch of herbs. I'm using parsley, mint, and basil here, and follow it with two generous cloves of garlic, four anchovies, though don't be afraid to add a few more, some roughly chopped, slightly sweet Castel Vetrano olives, because of course, we're making olive leaf pasta, and a good tablespoon of capers. Then I'm going to add a roughly chopped and de-seeded serrano pepper. While I deeply love anything spicy, if you want to tone down the heat, you can use a milder pepper like a jalapeno, a fraction of this, or take it out entirely. Finally, in go the juice and zest of half a lemon and about a third of a cup of olive oil. 
I'm only going to pulse this a few times. I'm really just looking for a mixture that's well chopped, but still coarse. Okay, now we're at sauce consistency. I like to adjust the salt at the end because we've got a lot of salty and briny things going on in here. Plus, I'll be mixing in some seasoned pasta water later on. Next, I'm going to transfer this to a big mixing bowl and make sure everything is coated in a little more olive oil until we're ready to add our pasta. Now we're onto the fun part, making our olive leaves. I'm going to start by cutting off a small piece of dough and then immediately rewrapping the rest so it stays nice and hydrated. Then I'm going to roll this piece into a thin rope about a quarter of an inch in diameter by spreading my fingers and stretching the dough outward. I'm basically looking for the thickness of a pencil here. Next, I'm going to cut the rope into about one or one and a half inch pieces. To get the full leaf effect, I like to roll each piece back and forth between my hands with a bit more pressure on the top and bottom to taper the ends. If it's easier, you can also roll the ends a bit thinner directly on the board. Now I'm going to firmly grip my butter knife, keeping it at a slight angle but almost parallel to the board. While lightly holding down one side of the dough, I'm going to slowly drag it outward horizontally until the center is much wider than the ends. There we go. That looks like a leaf to me. But remember, this is not about perfection, and part of the charm is that each one looks a little bit different. It'll definitely take a few tries to get the hang of the motion and the amount of pressure you need. You want to dig the serrated edge of the knife into the dough enough to make those beautiful sauce grabbing ridges, but not so much that the dough starts to tear. And of course, if you're not satisfied with how a particular piece looks, just smush it up and try again. Once I'm done with each piece, I'm going to put it on a baking sheet lined with some semolina flour. You can also use cornmeal, polenta, or a dry dish towel. And now I'm just going to put on some good music, a podcast, or even a movie, <laughs> and repeat this until all of the dough is gone. Okay, everyone, great news. We've spent quite some time making our olive leaves, but they only take a couple of minutes to cook, and the sauce is already done. I'm just bringing a large pot of water to a boil, adding a generous amount of kosher salt since this is the only time I'm seasoning the pasta itself before following it with the foyer de livo. I always make sure to shake out any excess semolina flour from the tray before adding the pasta, otherwise I may end up with porridge at the bottom of the pot and that is unfortunate. After just two to three minutes and a couple of taste tests, the pasta is done and I'm going to transfer it directly to the salsa verde with a slotted spoon. I like to bring a little bit of pasta water along with it so the starch and seasoning emulsifies beautifully into the olive oil and gets extra glossy and saucy. Try not to rinse the pasta if you can help it or all of that starch that helps the sauce adhere to the pasta will go right down the drain. And there you have it my friends, foyer de livo with a summer salsa verde. You can top this with an extra drizzle of really great olive oil and some more herbs if you wish, but whatever you choose, this is the perfect excuse to eat pasta on a hot August day if you ask me. Okay everyone, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions of pasta related content that you wanna see from me and from Food52, please leave a comment below and I really hope to see you next time. Bye.